Welcome! This video and the next will be made possible thanks to a member of the community which is the first on this channel's history by the way so I would encourage you guys to share what you know as well he just sent me a blend file and I'm talking about it right now and I'm going to do the same in the next video we're going to talk about how to make and draw things on screen without the use of a canvas and this is very versatile and very flexible and very interesting so let's get started Army 2D's canvas is very basic and very hard to like understand and it's quite buggy. So let's instead make an entire score system. So go check out the variable video that I made a while back. If you haven't already seen it, it's going to be very important. Let's use that to make a score system without using the canvas. So what we need to do is to get a render 2D node. This is a brand new uh, event node which essentially happens after the updates have all been completed. So the last thing that happens in the uh, script is that your UIs get drawn on screen. So what we're going to do is attach a draw node to it and we have multiple possibilities. We want to draw a score so we're going to get a string node. Now this is uh, going to allow us to input some text so let's go ahead and create a font for this. You can go ahead and grab any font you want, Windows has a bunch of default fonts or you can go ahead and add in a custom font from any website you like. Drop it into your folder by opening up the project folder and create the bundle folder if it doesn't already exist. This bundle folder allows you to add all your assets you want and now we will look at that folder and see what needs to be in the game. So we can reference our font inside the draw string node and now as soon as we press play it's going to open up and we'll be able to see our font. We have x and y coordinates to position our, our text on screen but by default it sets it at the top left hand side corner which for us kind of works because that's where we want our score system to be. However, one thing you can do to place this is to use math instead of manually inputting the values because your screen size would be essentially a grid and you have to figure out where this should be based on the grid and because 0, 0 will be on the top left hand side corner, not the middle. So what we can do is we can go ahead and get the windows resolution and divide it by 2. And we all agree that if we divide the resolution by 2, it's going to give us the middle. So we are setting it to the middle. And we can do the same thing for the X and the Y. Font is in the middle. But we don't actually want this, so we can delete all that. Now we need to go ahead and create ourselves a variable. For this one, I'm actually hosting this in the scene tab, this node tree. So I'm going to create a, a variable tree. So what we're going to do is create a new variable, call it score, and uh, plug it into this string value. We set the variable to 0 by default so we can go ahead and set the variable on keyboard started. So you can see now we need, we've uh, defined which variable we want to change the value of we need to actually add a value to it. So we're going to get that variable and add plus 1 to it. It might be a bit confusing so go check out the previous video if you haven't already seen it. Now when we play this every time I actually click space on the, my keyboard is going to increase the variable. As you can see it's increasing the variable with our custom font on the top left hand side corner without the use of a canvas. However, one itsy bitsy problem here is that our variable will disappear every time I close down the program because we're not actually saving it. So let's make an infinite clicker that saves the, the value when you close it and reopen it. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a write storage node and a read storage node. So we can write a value into our storage and we can read it later on. So what we want to do is to give this a name because this write node is essentially creating a new text file and we need to have a name for that text file so we're going to call it score simply. We can go ahead and get the same thing for the read storage. So make sure you actually use the same name because we're going to have to look at the same file to get see what's in that file and we can set the default value to zero. Now make sure you go and replace this read node with all the variables apart from the one that's plugged into this set variable because that is not one that's changing it that's one that's referencing it. So we can go ahead and plug the read into the print node to actually see what's happening that's not a necessity that's just to see uh, what's going on behind the scenes you probably won't have to do this the print node if you don't want to. Let's go ahead and run this and you can see that when we click it's left off from where we left off so it saved the value from 51 and we can keep clicking and it keeps going and now it's at 70 and now we keep going it's 70 now when we open it again it's from 17 we can click 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 all the way to 8 so our value has been saved in the score file which is pretty neat pretty uh, pretty good and if you go ahead and want to locate this file 
If you go to your C drive, then go to user, and then your username, go down to saved games, you should have a bunch of folders in here. I only have one, and it's called score, because that's the name of my project. And if I open this up in the edit, in the uh, clip pad, notepad I mean, then you can see we have the score variable, a bit of junk, and then the number. And that's why it's important. If we go ahead and play this again, you should notice that we have the score working normally and if we increase it and then go back and open up that folder once again it's changed and as you see it's there right there 15. If you want to delete the number entirely then just delete the folder in your save games section and there we go now you have no problem there's no score that's saved and you can start from zero. So that's how you read and write storage and that's how you create an entire score system without the use of a canvas. This video was made possible thanks to a community member. I'm going to leave his social in the description. Well, actually, it says Git page, but he has all his information on there. He's a really active and good member of the community, so you can definitely go check him out. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again someday.